Hey guys, what's up? It's Johnny here, sitting. <laughs> and welcome to another epic episode of the Share and Spy Create Show. And I'm here with my main man, B. How are you, brother? Man, I'm cold today, I'm Johnny. Cold. It's a freezing here in Australia right now, midwinter. Johnny's on his crutches or just sitting down <laughs> because he's still got a broken ankle. And what, yeah. do, what do we got today, John? Man, I got an awesome story from an absolutely musty location in New Zealand called Nugget Point. Yeah, and Johnny's going to inspire us with the brilliant image from that area, Nugget Point. And he's also going to talk about how to get rid of the blue blob of death in your images. And uh, how important circular polarizers are to add to your kit. All right, brother, let's get into it. Let's get man. into it. Enjoy. The Sixth Show. Share, inspire, create.com. There. All right, buddy. How about that location in New Zealand when we were there filming? I know you've probably heard us talk about it before, but yeah. it was absolutely epic, man. It was. Nugget Point, yeah. the lighthouse there. You know, the one thing I can remember about that, besides the absolutely epic location and nearly falling to my death, was, <laughs> <laughs> was walking up and talking to the ranger and getting access to the location right above the lighthouse. Yeah. You know, they're just absolutely epic view. That a lot amazing. of people don't do. I you know. know. Like going... Getting going to the source and actually finding out if there is a better way yep. to get a better shot. Mm -hmm. Local yeah. knowledge, man. You yeah. can't beat it. And that's yeah. a tip. But uh, I tell you what, the one thing I remember too, walking down between the trees and I had my hand sort of down and there was that spiky bush oh, and yeah. I pricked myself and he goes, oh, yeah, they're, 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 they're spiky. Watch those, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember it was like hurting for days, man. I pulled little prickles out of my fingers. Yeah. But, man, we got out there and just like this breathtaking view. And um, check out this image we've got. You can see... Jay's just getting set up there, um, and I'm behind him just getting set up to film him, and Brent's walked back around the point there, but it gives you a bit of an idea of where we are. You feel like you're on top of the world, mate. Well, you are, you are, it's... because you take two steps to the right, Johnny, and you are going to be at the bottom of the world. <laughs> oh, man. And, and, hey, another thing I remember from that location, which was really funny too, and, and guys, this is one thing that really excites me about photography, is while you're out there, you're creating all these other memories, man, you know, especially yeah. when you're traveling with other creative people, and... So one thing I remember is Brent's new 5D Mark III set up on a tripod and we were filming um, Jay, you and myself together. Um, and a little quick tip yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah that's right. And, and, and no, no one was behind the cameraman. And the wind, there was these gusts of wind and like, man, I swear your tripod was going to go off the And the camera's a little bit, or the, the whole setup's a little bit top heavy too. It is, it is. Because yeah. I had like a really light tripod and a with mic. a very heavy camera and a mic on the top. And, and it was like... <laughs> But anyway, so awesome location, epic memories, and I just, oh man, I can't wait. Actually, let's get into the Inspire because I've got an awesome image to show you of that okay. location. It's just absolutely epic. Man. Awesome. Let's jump let's in, do it. right into it. Okay, go. Inspire. And guys, just so you know, you can see we're both sitting today, <laughs> and it's because Johnny's still on crutches. I am. I'm still crutching around the place. and uh, Broke his ankle a week and a bit ago. Yeah, mm. I'm in, into week two, just about week two now, so I've still got the moon boot on, and you, yeah, you probably saw last episode. If you haven't seen anyway, last episode I do the reveal, the big moon boot reveal. It was yeah. a huge yeah, deal. Check it me. out. <laughs> yeah, it was. You see Johnny's it, uh, legs, his naked legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. So just so you guys know, I've actually now got to drive 15 minutes each way to go pick up Johnny first thing in the morning. That's why we've got our beanies on because it's freezing cold, <laughs> midwinter here freezing, in Australia. Oh. And then get back here to my garage, which is freezing too. And we're basically sitting on a heater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, man. back, back to you. Let's, Let's do it. All right, man. So I'm going to show you this image and uh, just take a few seconds to take it in. Uh, we need that music now. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Russ, I'll yeah. put it in. Yeah, put that in, Russ. Yeah, love that, man. So anyway, um, check out this spot, man. I just, uh, yeah. oh, just breathtaking. It's just absolutely amazing. And you'll find out why this ties in in a minute. We're going to talk about polarizers today. And obviously, this shot, Brett, I've used a polarizer. And you know how you can tell? The no. The dead giveaway that you can tell that I've used a polarizer in this you see shot. see through the water? Look at that water. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Down the bottom sort of right above that massive watermark that I'm going to have to get rid of because yes. it's a bit too big. Yeah. It's a big watermark. That actually. is, yeah. yeah. That's another show. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but you can actually see through the water there and you can see the bits of seaweed coming through the water. You can see the discoloration there from the sand after that wave's gone through. You can see that yellow down the bottom there and, and that's a dead giveaway and the intense blue of that water, that's a dead giveaway that I've used a polarizer Yeah, totally. Because you can see the difference between my image and yours. Yeah. I mean, this is obviously straight off the camera. I haven't yep. done any anything to it, and yep. it's 
the, the wood is dull and like kind of lifeless. It is, yeah, 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 definitely, man. And and you can see the other thing, um, the other thing that's a bit of a, a bit bit of a giveaway too is have a look at those highlights out the back there. Yeah. Okay, so you They're can so see much more intense. They they are intense, but the highlights have been pulled back out there. Oh, you can see okay. and, and look at the lighthouse. Okay, so it's yeah. still the lighthouse is the brightest thing in this image. And it was at the day too, because yeah. when this the was, was shot, a- the sun just come through yeah. a, a thin layer of cloud. So it was an overcast day. You can't tell here. Okay, it was a slightly yeah. overcast day, but the sun did actually come out just for that little bit there. You know, it was still being filtered by cloud from memory, but it and it was off ninety degrees, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, and you can see the highlights up there and those rocks right up there. So they've been pulled back, and and the polarizer actually does that as well. Okay. So it's pulled some intensity out of those highlights, right. as well as giving me the 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 edge to look through the water mm-hmm. there, which you can see, and. It's, uh, man, just made those blues just so much more intense. I just love it. And the other added bonus it does too is when you've got sort of harsh light on greens as well, um, the polarizer actually intensify those greens too, man. So there you go. That's, I mean, I just love this image. It's one of my, one of my favorite images. And, you know, we always say, you know, you always, often we don't always say, but you always hear photographers say, man, oh, you got to get up early and get that good light and get out in the afternoon. You don't have to. And, man, no. you don't have to. I'll tell you what, there's so many Im- great images. I mean, this is a prime example. This was middle of the day. Yeah. You know, it was. It, it was middle of the day and this is one of my favorite images. I, I really love this. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, being that's far south on the South Island of New Zealand, you know, the, the sun's pretty far north. It and is. being, you know, autumn or going yep. into winter. Mm-hmm. So even in the middle of the day, the sun, it's not right up above us shining down it's kind of to it's to the north Mm. quite uh, off axis a little bit so the polarizer really works well it does it does so the general rule of thumb a polarizer particularly when you're shooting a big wide scene open where you can see sky or you want to look through sky particularly you know Mm. when you when you can see sky and you want to intensify that sky polarizer works best when the sun is around 90 degrees to the direction you're shooting yes and it was here you can see the shadow so the shadows you know um just down the end of the lighthouse follow the the lean line out there you can see the shadows and the sun is directly 90 90 degrees degrees. so that's where you get the most polarization that's right yeah it is and uh we're going to talk about something called the blue blob of death a bit later and if you get the polarizer wrong i mean it's it's one of the most important filters to have in your kit because it's something you just cannot duplicate in post mate you need to have it in your kit it's a must actually i say it's the only filter you need it is you know, if, really? you had to, if you had to, if you didn't own a filter and you wanted to go out and buy your first filter, it's the very first thing you would mm-hmm. buy, and probably the only one you could probably get away. Circular polarizer. Circular polarizer. Yeah, filter. for sure, yeah. man. And we'll talk, we'll talk about a couple of different ones options in a minute, but um, yeah, man. So I just without without a polarizer, I would have never created this image. Yes. It never would be as intense and as beautiful as mm-hmm. it is, you know, without yeah. without a polarizer. And it's one of the things that you can't do in post processing. You, you can't. can't actually see through the water. If you can't see through the water, nope. there's nothing you can do in post-processing. Nothing's so done. it's the one filter you have to mm. have in the field to capture those amazing images. Yep, for sure, yeah. man. So um, I just want to show you a couple of types of polarizers. This one here is just a, a plain old round circular polarizer. And it just screws... I'll hold that up so you can see. Ta-da! And it go. just screws straight onto the front of your lens. And these comes in these come in different sizes. But what I would recommend you doing, guys, the best way to do it is... 77 is around, you know, the one that sort of fits all your wider angle lenses. Yeah. You know, or are, at least ours. Yeah. You know, well, we're well, using. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're on a micro four thirds or a mirrorless system, it, it, might may, it may be different for yeah. most DSLRs, but around 77. But what I recommend you doing is buy the biggest... Filter your biggest um, circular polarizer size that you need to fit your biggest lens. Yeah. And instead of buying different ones for either other lens that's smaller, just buy a step down ring or a step up ring, whichever way you want it. Yeah. They, they step up or down, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, because they're a hell of a lot cheaper. They're yeah. worth nothing and you can just yeah. screw them on and then you can just uh, adapt the bigger filter to your different smaller lenses. So yeah. and that's how you save yourself a bit of money. And right? actually also if you if you're doing a lot of wide angle work, it's good to get a step up ring. So say you've got a small uh, diameter front of your wide angle mm-hmm. lens um, lens, you you step it up so that you actually got a bigger polarizing filter on the front of your wide angle lens. Why do we do that, Johnny? Um it's going to stop you from getting vignetting. So yes. when you start to get obviously this is another we'll talk about this one in a minute, but uh, when you start to get further away from the front of the lens, obviously your lens is start the, the filter starting to encroach on the side of your yep. your the view of the lens. And a wide angle <laughs> lens it's, and you get it's pretty wide. So, it you, is. so basically the wide angle lens the the lens is looking at at almost sometimes close to 90 degrees out. I mean, mm. re- d- depending on how wide it is. So mm. that's why you need a really big f- a polarizing filter in front of a wide-angle lens. Yeah. So you actually don't cut it off. 
you know, get the vignetting. That's it. Man, do you want to tell us about this style yes, of polarizer? Yes, totally. Okay. So what I've got here, guys, is a circular polarizer on front of my Lee uh, filter kit. I think this is called the foundation kit, the, the Lee filter yep. kit, filter holder. So the circular polarizing filters on the front, so I can turn it around and get the maximum polarization that I want out of the water and get the glare out of the water or the sky. And then in the back here, I can actually put my graduated neutral density filters in the back, or my 10-stop filter, which I love, uh, in the back here to get those, you know, those long exposure images. And I can, you know, move my filter up and down, and I can get the polarizing filter to work. So I can stack filters together. So I can have a polarizing filter and another two filters before the light actually goes into my lens and I capture it. Yeah. So there is a couple of options, guys. Like, I know some of these systems, I remember I had another brand, I think it was called Koken, and I didn't have the polarizer. So what I'd actually do is mount my circular polarizer on first and then put the system over top, man. Yeah. And it doesn't really matter which way, you, where you have the polarizer in your filter system. Like, it, it can go before the your NDs or your grads or after. It makes no difference. doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. and I know Jay and Verena use another system where the polarizer filter is actually built in first yes. and they can turn in the so, so it doesn't matter where you really have it when you go with the this type of filter system. yeah and i guess yeah. it's just the convenience because i know with them they were i think it was battling a little bit to turn it from the back yeah because well, it was behind mm. all the other filters so it, it wasn't a, as accessible yeah that's as true. easy to get to yep definitely so yeah so that's the different types of filters now there's a few different types of situations where you'd use a polarizer filter, isn't there, buddy? So yeah. the number one one we've already talked about is cutting the glare off the water and getting to see through that water. I mean, that's that's a classic example of yeah. where you use a polarizer filter. Um, the other one is if you want to really intensify that sky. You yeah. Know, it'll just bring down the... the what am I trying to say, bro? Well, it makes the sky even <laughs> so much more blue, so much more yeah, intense. intense. And, and if you've got it. some clouds in the sky, the contrast between the light clouds and the dark blue is... Amazing, amazing when you're using yeah. a, a, a circular polarizing filter. Yeah. yeah. So another g great place to use it is say you're in doing some street photography and you want to look through glass into a cafe, cut the reflection off the glass. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another place you can use it for another type of photography. Um, another classic example is if you're in a like a, an, a forest sort of situation and, and it's like a cloudy day and, and, you, and you've and you got those harsh little highlights. You don't really notice it, hey, but you've got this harsh highlights all over the greenery. You know, you put that polarizer on and turn that bad boy man, it just cuts it away and it just changes the dynamic mm. of the image. So just amazingly. So yeah. how it works, guys, is um, Wave, and Brent's going to help me with this because he's a bit <laughs> more technical. But basically, uh, Wave travels in light. In light, waves. Is, light is a wave. Light is a wave, yeah. yeah. So And there's like, on the polarizer field, there's like these different bars that go through. You can't really see it. but um, And as you turn the polarizer, uh, depending on which way the waves of light are coming at you, yeah. the bars will block that part of the wave of light, yeah. won't it, mate? So it absorbs a, a certain angle of the light, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So that's why when when light uh, reflects off, uh, you know, off the surface of the water, you can actually turn the polarizing filter, and it only um, absorbs the reflected light off the off the top of the surface so that's why you can see in because you yep. can see the other light yeah the other angles of light i guess that's so. it perfect man so that's pretty much uh, why you need to have a polarizer <laughs> man go and grab one because they're just essential to having your kid and they're, they're just so useful and nothing yeah. mate. and like we said you cannot reproduce the effect that it creates in post so it's a must have man it's a must have i filter. carry this little bad boy with me everywhere so. okay there's one thing where you don't actually need a polarizing filter and that's when you're photographing portraits Okay. Now, sometimes a polarizing filter can affect the autofocus of your lens, of your camera. Well, that's something we haven't mentioned too, mate, yeah. as, as you know, compensating with your exposure when you put a polarizer on. Yeah, oh, the yeah. exposure too. But yeah. I'm talking about autofocus. If you're yeah. photographing portraits and not landscapes, mm. uh, I've tried it and a polarizing filter is not great when you're photographing portraits. Okay, that's a good tip. Um, or if you're indoors. Indoors, yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, it's virtually useless yeah. indoors. Yeah, makes it really dark. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So there's really no reflection you need to take off indoors, I don't think, yep. that I've, I've experienced. I remember when I was photographing real estate, photography and you know you go outside and you've got the polarizing filter on and you're shooting because you want the nice dark blue sky mm -hmm. and then you forget to take it off and you walk inside <laughs> and you're trying to take photos and you've got all the flashes on you like why they're so dark, dark. <laughs> everything's so dark and you forgot that you left the polarizing filter on the front of your lens yeah that's it so that's so funny man yeah so definitely not indoors and that sounds like definitely not for portrait that's a great tip mm. mate. um one thing i would say is um just remember when you do put the polarizer on it is going to cut back the light so you will have to adjust your exposure when you put it on yes. so i mean to be honest um before i had any nd filters brand these are little, little 
little tip to I would screw the polarizer on and it just cuts away just a touch of light and you get to get those slightly longer exposures you know yes. you just got to make sure that when you've got it turned the right direction mm-hmm. so you're not getting the big blue blobs mm, of totally yeah. <laughs> and you also get there's there's something called a uh, uh, what is it a variable ND filter. Ah, uh, yeah. Where you can actually vary the light that it cuts out, which is basically actually two polarizing filters back to back on the front, and you actually turn it, and and they both cut out the different light. But there's a point where it actually causes some funny things <laughs> yeah, in your it image. Yeah, this cross hatching. Yeah, sort of yeah. Effect, which yeah. is basically two polarizing on top of two polarizing filters on top of each other. Yeah, that's probably that. Uh, what you're seeing is like where the, the point where the two the lines that are coming the filters out yeah. are coming across and creating that hatching of sort of yeah. effect. Yeah, yeah so, it's weird. Cool, man. Polarizers are great. Go and grab one and uh, let's get into the create bit, buddy. Okay, awesome. Create. All right, buddy, teach us something. Yeah, okay, guys. So say you go out and you shoot with a polarizer and you bring your images back and your sky is just all whacked out. There's this big blue blob. I call it the blue blob of death. It is. <laughs> 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 I heard that music there, Russell. <laughs> but, uh, Russell's our video editor, by the way, guys. If you haven't, uh, yeah, if you figured haven't that out, have figured that out yeah, already. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so I'm going to do this both in Lightroom and Photoshop. And this is an image I took, oh man, years ago. Um, and you can see I've obviously had a polarizer on there, and it looks yeah. absolutely terrible. You can see what's happened. It's got this big blue, weird gradient-looking thing. Yeah. And basically, why I, why I've got that big blue blob is because the sun you can see is just off to the left of this image, yeah. and it's nowhere near ninety degrees. Yeah. Or I hate so what, you can hey, get away with one hundred and eighty-two. Hey, buddy, yeah. what's that funny-looking structure at the end there? Oh, that happens to be the opera house. <laughs> <laughs> not, no, not Oprah's house. It's the opera house. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, Oprah can probably afford <laughs> it. She probably could. Yeah. Probably for two of them. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so it's not a, not a great image, guys, but uh, that's okay. It's a cool cool location, and you can see it's crowded as hell that day I was there. So yeah. Sunday afternoon drinks at the Opera Bar, man. Very uh, popular location. Yep. All yep. right, so let's get into it, guys. I'm in Lightroom here. I am in the Develop module. I've just done some basic editing on this image. I'm going to jump over here. Let me close this because I'm going to jump over here to the radial filter. And basically, what we want to do is we want to create a radial filter over top of the blue blob. And we just want to make sure that it's roughly similar to the shape of the blue blob. And we can change this after we add the effect, okay? So one thing I do want to do, I want to make sure it's inverted. I want to make sure it's feathered. And we might play with this feather again in a minute. And all we want to do, guys, is we want to turn up the exposure, okay? So let's turn up the exposure. Oh, lovely. And look at, look that. at that. It's almost gone. It's gone. And, and now what you would do is you just move this around and you can change the feather by moving this in and out here as well, you know, sort of just till it just till it um just just affecting that area want to yeah. take away so if i close that there and i'll give you a bit of a before and after that's before Whoa. actually that's right before let me jump in the history panel i just want to show you the uh, before and after the radial filter so if we go before the radial filter and after the, oh what have i done there here let's go back a bit add radial filter and up to date so there you there can see go. there's the before yeah. and after that little radio filter there and you can see it's quite an easy fix now there's a couple other things you may want to do there sometimes you get a weird gradient down from the corner and sometimes the gradient tool is better to do this mm-hmm. okay it all depends on how your blue blob of death looks and what you need to do and other times um even after you've added maybe a graduated radio filter you may want to go and touch it up with a brush so it's, it's a bit of hit and miss with this um sort of technique but that's the rough sort of thing you want to you want to Get the blue blob and you want to lighten it up basically mm-hmm. and now i could go ahead and add my gradient filter and darken the sky down and balance that whole sky back out mm-hmm. so there you go that's how i do it in lightroom now i want to jump over to photoshop a little bit different photoshop um actually i think photoshop's good i mean it's a few more steps and sometimes you know lightroom i just can't get it right in lightroom you know so i have to take it to photoshop okay. to fix this blue blob of death but first thing i'm gonna do is command j because i'm just going to duplicate the layer because photoshop is a destructive editor i just want to always be able to go back to my original mm-hmm. image buddy so um first thing i'm going to do is grab the the marquee tool here and you can see i've already got it selected yeah okay yeah. zoom in a bit on that image yeah i can okay just so it's a little bit bigger yeah i can do yeah, that cool so I basically want to give myself a bit of space around the blue blob of death. Okay. okay? So I'm just going to do a rough selection out around here. That's where the blue blob's bleeding. Yeah, the, the blo- blue blob of bleeding. Of blo- yeah, anyway. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Anyway, <laughs> so I've made a rough selection there. And I'm going to refine edge. And you may need to do this a couple of times, guys. Okay. So I've hit, uh, let me go back actually. Let me cancel that. So up the top here, I've got the refine edge button after I've made my selection. So I'm going to hit refine edge. And what I want to do, I want to feather this out to the wazoo. I don't know how far that is, but it's a long way. Okay? Yeah. So I want to make it nice and feathered, guys, okay? 
So maybe just I'm just watching that corner up there. Okay. So let's see how we go here. You know, sometimes sometimes with the with the selection and the feathering, you may need to go back and do it again. It just depends. You know. So I'm just taking a bit of a guess. This is what I need for this one. Okay. So I'm going to hit OK. The next thing I want to do, I want to add a curves adjustment layer. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here, hit this, and I'm going to go curves. And basically, all I want to do, and you can see, because I've had that selected, look at the mask down here mm. in my layers. Mm -hmm. It's actually made a selection of that area there. So I'm just going to bring the, the I'm going to lighten it up with this side of the curves, and let's just see what happens here. Let's see if I put enough feather on that. Oh, lovely. So look there you that. go. It's not too yeah, bad. Yeah. So you can see, I probably, I probably could have feathered that a bit more because I'm getting some banding around yeah. in here. You see okay. where it's lightening yeah, yeah, probably too right. much. Yeah. And it is a bit of hit and miss with this, okay? There's yeah. no like exact rule of thumb, right. but that's the basic, that's the basic way I would fix mm -hmm. the blue bob of death in, in uh, Photoshop. Um, okay. You can see if I was, if I was had a bit more time, I would actually um, delete that curved layer and make another selection probably, and probably feather it a bit more, guys. That's okay. what it needs. It needs more feathering. So it is a bit hit and miss in Photoshop. You just mm -hmm. need to play with it till you get mm -hmm. it right. So basically what you're doing there is you're uh, highlighting the, the dark areas with, that, um, with the uh, curves layer, right? Highlighting the dark, so I'm lightening the dark areas. Lightening with the, curve the shadows. Layer. Yeah, basically, that's basically yeah, it. I'm yeah. lightening up with the curves layer. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So you can see there's before and after. It's not too bad. Yeah. I could do a better job with that one. I, okay. I would make another selection, but um, yeah. So that's basically the two ways of fixing the blue ball of death. Of course, um, you know, the first way is not to get it in the first place. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> so yeah. just be very careful when you put your polarizer on. Yes, it's a it's a useful filter, but mm -hmm. when you've got blue sky and you got that sun direction in the wrong, you got the sun in the wrong place to the direction you're shooting. Yeah. You know, it's going to create that blue blob and and going with a really wide angle lens oh and, yeah and turning the polarizing filter to the max to the max that's where you well. get it yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 totally cool awesome man so that's the two ways I, i'd get rid of it in post and uh man it's been another epic show brother hasn't it yeah it's great yeah well man. thanks for that johnny it's no uh, i've learned something getting rid of the blue blob of death over there and, you know. <laughs> and how useful the polarizers mate we oh, recommend yeah. you go grab one get it in your kit and uh and don't forget the experiences you can have when you're out there with your photography because it's not always about the photography no. it's often about the people you're out there with and the memories you create i oh, mean that is one of the most and the adventure of oh, actually yeah. getting to the, the spot man. and 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 photographing Oh, yeah. And I'll never forget uh, Nugget Point in New Zealand. And no, guys, if, you, if you've never been there, it's got to be on your bucket list. It's one of the places. It's uh, right at the bottom of the South Island of New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And it's it's epic. Yeah, absolutely epic, man. Yeah. Such memorable. Oh, well, man, it's been another huge week for me, you know, crutching around on my crutches, bro. <laughs> but uh, I've been spending heaps of time in the Share and Spy Create Lounge. And mm -hmm. guys, check out the special we have for you below. Um, it's a little sneak peek there to get you in to, to have a look about what's going on in our awesome photography community, isn't it, buddy? I love it. And, you know, right now we've got the, uh, the Rule of Thirds assignment. Yep. And everyone's adding images and commenting and, you know, inspiring and, you know, motivating everyone to, yep. to keep going. So that's what I love about the lounge. It is, man. Yeah. It's just uh, photographers just like you learning and growing in their craft together, man. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. All right, guys, it's been another epic show. Go, run out and buy that polarizer. And look, there are uh, different types of ones you can buy, as in brands and price ranges, you know, but just get the one you can afford. And, and man, you won't regret it because they're yeah. just absolutely awesome. Have awesome, a great guys. week, guys, and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Cheers. Bye. Bye. To find out more, go to shareinspirecreate.com.